Hello and welcome. In this video, I want to talk about lake houses, the delta lakes within the lake house, and how you would go about manipulating those delta tables using notebooks. Now, of course, you can um, manipulate this using data factory or data pipeline. But in this video, I want to talk about how you would go about doing it using notebooks. You're probably like, if you want to create a new column uh, in a delta table or <clears throat> you want to create a view and make that view available, what are your options? Um, so let's get started. Now here I'm in my lake house and I have a few files. I want to add them as um, tables into my lake house. I've already gone ahead and uh, added a few of them. All I have to do is load tables as new table. This will add it as a delta file into my lake house. Now my, I added my date table. And if you notice, the column date is of type um, string, but <clears throat> I need to change that to type, uh, type date. Um, to achieve this, like I said, you could probably do it using data factory, connect to this and then um, do your uh, manipulations, add a column and so forth and write it back to the lake house. But you can't update the existing table. You have to create a new table in that scenario. Now, uh, but using notebooks, you can um, update an existing uh, delta table, add columns to it and so forth. So let's see how you would do that. Okay, here I'm in my notebook and all i have to do is uh, you know run this command alter table command add column date id and it's going to add the new column now notice that this notebook i have set it to use spark sql um, so i'm directly writing uh, spark sql commands now um, of, of course uh, you can add anything else you need uh, uh, you know enhance your date table by adding more columns but i'm taking the simple example so after running this alter table command you see that date ID is added as a date. And then I can update this table using uh, a set command uh, and copy the date field. Okay, now that uh, the column is updated, I'm going to run a simple select. And we see that now we have date ID as a date field. Now let's uh, head back to the lake house and we'll see if this column actually shows up in the lake house as well. And in the lake house, let's uh, go ahead and refresh the date table. And once that's done, you'll notice that the new date ID is added. And let's see if it's available in the SQL analytics endpoint uh, view as well. And here you see again in this view as well, you see date ID is available. So that's cool. So whatever uh, update uh, you did in your notebook is available in the SQL endpoint as well. Now, the next thing I want to do is create a view in notebook and see again if the same, if once I create a view in notebook, if it's available in my lake house and uh, SQL endpoint of my lake house. So I'm creating a simple view, basically getting the sales summary by year. Um, so let's go ahead and create this view. Okay, so the view is created and I've executed a select statement against this view and you see by year, I get my sales and volume amount. So I'm able to, uh, access this view in my notebook. Now let's go ahead and see if this view is available in the lake house. Now here is the SQL endpoint of my lake house. And if I go ahead and refresh this view section, you see that there are no views here. And what happens if I go to my lake house view? Same thing. There is nothing available here. So the view that I created in my notebook is only available in, in the notebook. It's It's not part of my lake house. So I can use that view to uh, further uh, manipulate or do whatever I need to do in my notebook, but it's not part of my lake house. Now let's uh, check uh, this behavior of views. What happens if I create a view using SQL Analytics endpoint? So let's do that. Now I'm creating a similar view here using, uh, using SQL Analytical endpoint. Same view, basically uh, summary by year. Uh, getting my getting revenue and units by year. So let's see what happens. Now, once this view is executed, if I go down to the views, you see that the views is view is now available in my SQL analytical endpoint. And now let's, uh, let's try one more thing. Let's go to the lake house and uh, create a new semantic model. Now in the semantic model, uh, I can see the views and tables available, right? So I, I'm able to access the view that I created in my SQL analytical endpoint and add it to my semantic model as well. And uh, of course, uh, there is options to, you know, search just by view and so forth, but just, just so you know, but it's available. The view and the tables are available. I can add it to my SQL analytical endpoint. And just a 
uh, heads up for you if you add a new uh, table oh let, let me show you that as well here i've um, created the i'm creating a new semantic model and i want to make sure that the new column that i created for date the date id column i want to see if it's available in my semantic model um, now here <clears throat> we are in the semantic model and if you see date id is available now if you add a new column to a table after you've created your uh, semantic model what you need to do is go to edit tables and click on this reload this will add that new column into your data model otherwise typically it automatically does not so you need to click on that refresh now another thing to note here is on the view that we created there is this warning sign now the reason uh, for this warning sign is the storage mode although it, when you hover over it it says direct click which is fine but when you add it to a visual it uses direct query because it's a view on top um, uh, it's a view it's not a table uh, so it's not materialized hence it does not use direct link but it actually runs the query every time um, you access any fields in this view so that's something to know, keep an eye uh, uh, keep a note of because direct query is uh, slightly slower compared to direct link Hope that was some good, helpful information for you. Uh, and uh, as always, if you've got any questions, reach out to us, obvious.com.